Next up, the soybean gall midge began emerging in 2018 and caused measurable injury and yield loss to soybean crops in Nebraska, Iowa, South Dakota, and Minnesota. It left producers and researchers reeling for answers to the threat. Now, the Soybean Gall Midge Alert Network has been put in place to better equip producers and consultants with much-needed information to best manage the pest. Market Journal's Bill Dodd has more. In 2019, the Soybean Gall Midge Alert Network was established to keep tabs on the adult emergence of soybean gall midge. This network has been at the forefront of keeping producers ahead of the threat by providing them with the most up-to-date data on the pest in the fastest possible manner. It allows us to send a, a phone call, text message, and email on an automated system. So I can type out a message and project that to what is now hundreds of, of farmers and co-ops and agronomists uh, about the first emergence of soybean gall midge in the network that we have established, which is quite actually large at this point. We're 34 sites uh, across four states. Uh, and so that provides people with an opportunity to uh, respond to this uh, and get the information as quickly uh, as possible. Getting this information out quickly and accurately is no small feat. It takes a team of researchers working throughout multiple states and institutions to gather and interpret the data that we can access at the push of a button. So the, the collective experience, which ranges from me, which is early in my career, to uh, others that have been around for, for quite a while, uh, allows us to ask questions, think differently, use our past experiences uh, to guide the questions that we're asking. And, and we're also able to engage with a lot of clientele that way and gather their information, which has been really critical to this whole process since we started. Um, and so we've been a, a, a pretty tight-knit group since, since this kicked off. Uh, and we actually received funding to add uh, 12 other states or 11 other states besides Nebraska into this. Uh, to determine if soybean gall midge is present in those states. And so that's been really important because the researchers in those states are being engaged on current information on soybean gall midge. So if it occurs in the state, uh, they can react fairly quickly. And you can see most of those are third instar larger larvae that are likely to uh, fall off and pupate pretty soon. And then if we've you got have dealt with this pest before, you probably already know you should be regularly scouting your fields. Once adult emergence begins, there's a very short window of opportunity for treatment. On the other hand, for those who haven't had it in their area yet, but may be on the lookout, Justin tells me early detection plays a crucial part in knowing how to prepare for the following that's, season. That's like typical symptoms before you peel it open, that black right at the soil surface. What stage you are in dealing with soybean gall midge, if it's your first time looking for it and you've not heard about it in the area or saw any significant death, I would say that those growers, consultants, and others that are looking for it could wait uh, maybe even until late July or early August to see if there's any signs of it in the field. They're unlikely to uh, have to manage it this, this season, uh, but detecting it in the field might give them an understanding of what they may need to do next year. Um, for those that are dealing with it, um, rapidly scouting for it, uh, mostly following the alert system. We don't have a lot of time to respond to this particular insect in the field. Uh, so by the time we get an emergence of adults, uh, we found last year you have about 10 days to respond with a pyrethroid type insecticide to see any response. Um, and so that that's kind of limits the window. Uh, but consultants certainly within about 10 days, 10 to 14 days after we start to see adult emergence could start scouting fields to identify what fields are, are receiving injury and likely to be a problem during the year. Uh, things progress pretty rapidly. Within about 20 days, we have signs of wilting or death. Uh, and so following up on those fields the following week or weeks after uh, might give them an opportunity to say maybe we should replant or plant in something just to avoid the tremendous amount of weed pressure that shows up when there's not a lot of soybeans growing in those areas. And it's an edge pest. So it's that first hundred uh, feet or so that really gets injured in the field. If you happen to have detected this particular pest for the first time and are currently making a management strategy for next season, one method for controlling the pest that is proven effective is waiting to plant your high-risk fields till last. Yeah, uh, so high-risk fields are fields where we saw injury in adjacent fields the previous year. So any signs of that injury, they, they can escalate fairly quickly. I've heard from a number of growers, just a few dead plants, maybe five feet of death into the field, to the adjacent field farm the following year receiving a significant amount of loss. Uh, and so growers should be kind of noting that in the back of their mind. Um, and so it's really critical that they 
they take that seriously in terms of, of looking for it and knowing whether or not it's there. Um, it, it's caught a lot of people, I think, by surprise. And, and although we don't fully understand this, I would uh, indicate that anybody who had hail in late July, early August last year uh, on soybeans, watch those fields pretty closely. We've got a number of reports as well as some data of our own that indicate that it may boost uh, adult populations. Maybe they're attracted to those injured plants. That's been found in other species in this same genus this insect is in. Um, perhaps it's a coincidence. And so we, we really look to farmers and, and others in, in the egg community to uh, continue to help us understand whether or not that's something real or not. While researchers continue their hunt, Justin tells me now is probably the time to keep your eyes peeled in the field, as he expects adult emergence to begin sometime in mid-June this year. Reporting for Market Journal, I'm Bill Dodd.